Well, greetings. My name is Peter Hay, and I am in the sanctuary of the United Methodist Congregation that gathers for worship and ministry at uh, Wilmington, Massachusetts. And I bid you welcome for this weekend worship video on this Labor Day weekend. You'll notice things are a little different this, uh, this, uh, for this video. Uh, both uh, Paul Hipple is recovering from surgery quite nicely and Jameson is still testing positive for COVID. So uh, I'm, all here by, I'm here all by myself on, uh, uh, for the making of this video. So it's a little different and I appreciate your uh, patience and your understanding. It is our hope and it is our prayer that you will find these next few moments of uh, worship spiritually uplifting, that you will find God's promise and God's presence for your life, and that you might live confidently as a child of God. So I bid us now to give our attention to one of our lay leaders, Denise, as she leads us in a call to worship, prayer, and Holy Scripture. May we be in the spirit of worship as we hear the words from our call to worship. Imagine molding a lump of clay in your hands and think about the creation of the world, the touch of God's hands on the very substance of the universe. As you change the appearance of the clay with the touch of your hands, think how the world you live in has touched and changed you. Think of how your hands have touched other people in love, in anger, in sorrow and joy. Think of the things and people who have touched your life and molded you into the person you are today. Please join us for our opening hymn, Spirit of the Living God, number 393. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me. God, what a wonderful world you have made out of wet mud, and what beautiful men and women. And we thank you, God, for initiating the co-creation of this marvelous world with us. As your hands twirl us round and round and touch us everywhere, shape us to be the most beautiful creation we can be, so that together we and you can model for others how wonderful it can be to be the work of your hands. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in my potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, 
then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Well, this brings us to our time in our service for our children and for the child in each one of us. And so we just heard a scripture today about a potter using a potter's wheel. And Peter's going to be talking about that a bit more in his sermon, I'm sure. Now, I'm here at home recording this, and I don't have clay or a potter's wheel, but I do have green hands right now because I've been playing with some of this kinetic sand. It's kind of like clay, kind of like a potter's wheel. You can shape it. You can build with it. You can make it into fun shapes. You can maybe make a sand castle out of it. I don't know. But if any of you have ever gotten to play with clay or a potter's wheel, I remember taking classes uh, where I got to use a wheel when I was younger. One of my favorite things is when you're painting or when you're maybe you're drawing with crayons or with ink pen, everything feels so permanent, right? If you mess up, there's not really any way to do, get rid of it. It's kind of there, you can't erase it. But with, with clay, as you shape it and as you mold it, you can always adjust. You can always move stuff around. You can, you can start over if you need and you're not out any material or anything like that. And so you can really get it just right. So when we talk about clay today in our scripture, it talks about God as as a potter on a potter's wheel. And I think that's wonderful to know that we're kind of like that. Even if we mess up, we know that God is there making something beautiful out of us. And maybe something goes a little wrong along the way, but we know that we have a God who lets us correct, who never thinks that our mistakes are permanent, who never counts us out, who never tears up the piece of paper and throws us away because it's, it's permanent, it's in ink or it's in paint. But we're much more like clay on God's potter's wheel as we work together, trying to shape ourselves with God working in our lives, shaping us to be a beautiful work of art. I'm not capable of making a work of art out of kinetic sand by any means, but thank goodness God can work with us much better than I can work with this sand. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for your role in our lives, helping to grow us and shape us into beautiful works of art. And we thank you that there is no mistake along the way that can prevent that from happening. We know that no matter what we do, no matter what we've done in the past, that you're still there working to improve us and to grow with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Potter's Hand Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure, all of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence guided me by your holy spirit teach me dear lord to live all of my life through your eyes i'm captured by your holy calling set me apart I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, I pray. Take me, mold me, use me, fill me. I give my life to the power. Be 
beside me I give my life to the potter's hand Ooh, 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 ooh. Reshaping the clay. Jeremiah sees God as a potter in two very different ways in today's passage. One of the ways is very helpful, and I would like to spend most of my time with that image. However, the other idea is somewhat less than helpful. And as much as I would like to just gloss over it and pretend you didn't hear it when it was read, I think to do so would be professionally irresponsible. Now we get the less than helpful version in chapter 18 at verse 11. The potter God is shaping evil against Israel because Israel had failed to be faithful. And if they simply would have straightened up, God would stop shaping this part of evil against them. I have to tell you as I stand before you as your pastor that I don't believe that that is truthful. Now, there is a very long and a very complicated explanation for how I can say that and still believe in the authority of Holy Scripture. And uh, if you would like that long explanation, I would love to sit down and chat with you about that. So if I've just piqued your interest, I hope we can talk. But I think it is theologically wrong to say that God shapes evil against Israel that God shapes evil against us, that God shapes evil in any way, shape, or form. The more helpful image is that the potter God, that God is the potter and we are the clay, that God is molding us and remaking us into something that is beautiful, to something that's quite valuable and something that's quite beneficial. What we are becoming will endure and it will endure even through the momentary and the inevitable setbacks that we might experience along life's way. God is still the artisan of our lives. One person described it in this very poetic and very beautiful way. Let me read it for you. This potter sat at her wheel, her hands touching, her body close, creating, nurturing, and shaping things into existence. The potter who, when things didn't work out, when the clay collapsed, when the clay didn't do what it was supposed to do, instead of throwing it out, and instead of throwing it in the oven and saying, well, that's good enough. No, this potter tenderly picked it up and started again. 
hands touching, body close, creating, nurturing, and shaping. If God is the potter and we are the clay, faith then is not about being right or wrong. Faith is more about being responsive to the divine touch. Faith is about the transformation of our lives. Faith is about how we listen for God's voice. Faith is about trusting that you and everyone else is a work in process. I think most of all, faith is about learning how to be ourselves. You see, you don't need to pretend to be somebody else. You don't have to do that because, well, maybe you're afraid that someone won't like you. You are likable. Or maybe you're afraid to be yourself because you carry some level of shame that, that, that who you are in your core is not good enough. But God has already made you good enough. And God is in the process of remaking us all. So just trust and be yourself. I also think you'll be a lot happier in life and that I'll be a lot happier in my life if I remember that about everybody else that I come into contact with. We're all works in progress. We're all in the hands of this creating God. I uh, would like to end this communion meditation with a quote from a rising Methodist scholar I just learned about this week. His name is Dr. West. And he said one of the things that he loved most about our United Methodist Church, and, and I would say that I agree with him as well, is that we try to be a big tent of a denomination, that we try to have room for everyone, or at least room for everyone who wants to be here. He says this, the culture wars have dumped themselves on the church. We've been focusing too much on those things that divide us rather than those things that unite us and call us together. Indeed, most of the things that we debate and are stressing our denomination so much were things that Jesus never talked about and are things that were never mentioned in the foundational creeds of the Christian faith. We are a diverse church founded in Christ. We take the Bible seriously and we trust that everyone has a relationship with scripture. And we are called to make disciples. And the shame is that young people are leaving the church because they see us more as divided. And then he says something very insightful. That if we could just remember that at the core of the church, 
is not our doctrines or our beliefs, but that at the core of the church is a table. A table that Jesus sat at with his disciples, giving them bread and giving them a cup and saying, do this in remembrance of me. As we gather around the Lord's table today, let us rejoice that we are clay in the potter's hands. <coughs> the potter who sat at her wheel, her hands touching, her body close, creating, nurturing, and shaping things into existence. <coughs> this potter, who when things didn't quite work out, when the clay collapsed, when the clay didn't do what it was supposed to do, instead of throwing it out, and instead of throwing it in the oven and saying, ha, good enough, no, she tenderly picked it up again and started again. Hands touching, body close, creating, nurturing, and shaping. Amen. Well, I do want to thank you for your ongoing generosity. Because you have been so faithful, uh, our congregation has been able to thrive and continue to be about its work, and uh, we're thankful for that. Some have gone to our church's website, and they have followed the prompts for online giving, and they have made their gifts in that way. Others have gone to their own bank, and through a use of a bill pay service, they have arranged to have a gift and many have made those reoccurring gifts. And that has been such a blessing and such a source of uh, dependable income. And we are so, so very thankful. Others still write checks and mail them in or drop them off when they're out and about. But I want you to know, however you choose to give, that your gifts matter. And that because of your faithful generosity, our congregation continues to be faithful to its work and to its mission. So I thank you for that. Well, it's not our custom to share our joys and concerns through this weekend worship video for privacy's sake. But if there's a way that we can pray for you, I hope you would reach out and let us know. You can call us on the phone. You can send us a message through Facebook. You can send us an email. However you choose to reach out, we will respond. And if we can pray for you, we would count that a privilege. So thank you. I invite us now to be together in a spirit of prayer. And the prayer I'll share with you is one that comes from uh, one of our United Methodist colleagues, Arlene Tuttle, who's the district superintendent in, uh, up in Maine. I know Arlene well and do so appreciate her spirit and her prayers. Won't you pray with me? Divine artisan, you who calls us forth from the dust, you who creates beauty and diversity, you who delights in the dwarf willow and the giant sequoia, the pygmy shrew, and the African elephant. Reassure me that I too am your loving, fashioned creation. When my life becomes misshapen, when I've disappointed myself or others, and worst of all, perhaps when I've disappointed you, when my selfishness 
or carelessness or wrongdoing have marred the image of Christ in me, remind me that I am still a work in progress. Remind me that like clay on a potter's wheel, I will not be rejected or discarded, but continue to be formed and reformed as seems good to you. Master Potter, help me remain as malleable as the clay in your hands, so that my heart bears the imprint of your fingers, and my life assumes the shape that you design. For you design it with your great wisdom and artistry. Mold me and mold us into a vessel of your love and your grace. And we pray together as we were taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, everything you need to know about the life and ministry of our congregation we send out every week in our weekly email that we call God and You on Route 62. If you are not receiving that and you would like to, please email our office and let us know that all of our announcements are printed there. Uh, but I would like to say that next Sunday will be a very special day. We're trying to build back from the COVID shutdown. A few years ago, the uh, Collective wisdom said that we should stop gathering and that we should do everything we can to stay safe. And we as a congregation made the decision to, to uh, uh, respect that. Well, it seems like the, uh, the threats are minimized and now it's time to gather again. So our hope is that next Sunday we will uh, start off our, our new church school year. And... Um, we're going to have a rally day on Sunday, September 11th. So come join us as we build back and kick off our Sunday school together. We'll have fun in our faith. We'll have some field games. We'll have some craft activities. And uh, we're going to have ice cream as well. And I'm going to tell you a story that I think you'll find a little fascinating about the history of the ice cream sundae and uh, why it is that we tend to enjoy those. And uh, also get a sense of what you can expect from a church school year. I'd also lift up that on that same day, after the worship service, will be the very first meeting of our confirmation class. I've sent letters out to some of our eighth graders and, uh, and some others. And, uh, but confirmation is a very important time. And if uh, you're hearing this voice and you're in the eighth grade or more and would uh, like to consider confirmation, I hope you'd reach out and, and let me know. You can call me at the office and I'd love to join you in that class. So those are the announcements that I wanted to share. But again, to, re to state it, everything you need to know is in the e-weekly that we send out and we'd love to send that to you. So thank you. This is the first Sunday of the month, and uh, it is our custom to serve Holy Communion. Uh, we use these little cups, and uh, we find that to be so much more safe. Uh, on the bottom, you'll notice a, uh, there's a cover, and you can pull off that cover, and that will let you access a small piece of bread. And you can then turn it over and open the top, and that will allow you to access the grape juice. And this is how we will serve Holy Communion within the, within the sanctuary. And uh, 
If you'd like to come, we'd be pleased to share Holy Communion with you. If you're still not comfortable and uh, not feeling safe to gather in congregation for whatever reason, and you would like to receive Holy Communion, please call me, and I would count it a privilege to meet with you and, ar and arrange an opportunity for you to share in the bread of life and the cup of our salvation. Before I close this time of worship, I want to thank you for uh, spending a few moments with us. I hope you found these moments of worship and meditation to be uh, helpful in your life. And before we leave our time together, I'd like to give you a, a final blessing for, for this day and for our time together. Lord God, who creates all things for a reason, shape us like clay to our purpose. Tell us our true names. Fire us with the Holy Spirit in darkness and in light. And guide us to the people and the places that can work your will in us. For we are ready, Lord, to be made your servants and your disciples. In Christ's name, amen.